been a tough year, hasn't it? But there's been some things that have got us through the malaise, the misery, as it were. And those things would be the games that made 2021 less shitty. Merry Christmas. Well, I'm probably going to be the really weird one because none of my top games of 2021 are actually games that came out this year. I, like most gamers, have an absolute backlog of games and had this year decided on the fact that I was going to play through some of them and what do you know, I actually managed it this year. So, my number three is going to be Dead by Daylight. I'm really late to the game, seriously I am, and unless I'm playing against friends I am terrible at this game. I'm a horror junkie and I really do enjoy being scared and also kind of doing the scaring. As a killer, running around and trying to catch people is just so much fun and as a survivor, trying to escape and just have a laugh is, is absolutely amazing. The only downside to this game? Sometimes the community can be a bit of a bitch to new players and I do think that everybody needs to remember we all start off as a noob at some point, no matter how much you want to disagree with that statement. My number two is Zombie Army 4. It's a pretty solid third-person shooter. I have a lot of trouble with first-person shooters. If I play too long, I get really sick, which means that sometimes I just don't get to play the latest game that everyone else is raving about. So when a good game with the ability to play with friends like this turns up, I, of course, am going to just run with it. The horde mode's pretty solid too, and I do enjoy running around looking for collectibles that also move. Um, chasing after the zombie hands, anyone? Speaking of, my top choice is going to be Graveyard Keeper. Think Stardew Valley, but you're a Graveyard Keeper. Except there's a lot more other stuff that you can do too. I mean, you can farm, you can become a fisherman, become a cleric of the faith and just generally cut up dead bodies for science. Because why not? It was a little difficult to grapple with in the beginning, but after that it's just a genuine laugh and I really did enjoy it. So they're my top games for 2021. Hopefully next year I'll be able to add some new games to the list, but until then, that's mine. My top three games of 2021. Well, um, this might be a shock to some of the guys I take. It was Ghost of Tsushima. Um, I really enjoyed Ghost of Tsushima throughout the year. It's a great game, um, I'm sure a couple of the guys have within the team actually agree with me uh, with regards to the fact that it's just a really really nice beautiful game to play and my second game was Spider-Man Miles Morales uh, having had the PS5 on launch uh, I had the opportunity to play Spider-Man uh, Miles Morales uh, this year and it was just graphically beautiful a uh, nice little story and uh, nice challenges and again, who doesn't love the photo modes in these games? They are absolutely brilliant. And on the third one, my third game is Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. I'm a COD freak, yes. And Black Ops Cold War, is that a controversial decision? Quite possibly, it's not a fan favorite. But this, if, this one itself, I've actually spent probably more time than any other COD uh, on multiplayer. I really enjoyed the challenges with regards to ranking up the weapons, the maps, the, the, the all the different play modes that were involved as well, and of course the reintroduction of a decent zombies uh, set of maps. Um, yeah, it's it's been my go-to. The story mode itself, I really enjoyed, and it had answered quite a few questions. I, I like the fact that there was a bit of an alternative ending towards the end. I'm not going to ruin that if you haven't actually played it. But yeah, so those were my three top uh, 20, 21 games that I really enjoyed playing this year. I couldn't really think of a top three for the whole year, so... Uh... Here's my three games that I'm ending off 2021. Number three, Heavenly Bodies. Great game, really fun, really difficult. Definitely recommend checking it out. Number two, Hunt Showdown. Yeah, I enjoyed it that much this year that I bought it for the PlayStation 4 and the PC. 
and number one project Zomboid uh, old game but a lot of fun zombie apocalypse survival game um, recently they did an update for multiplayer which made the game so much more more fun great community um, again very difficult but that's my number one to be honest, I don't think it's been a great year for games. Uh, 2021, still in the awkward stage in between generations where we're getting a little bit of beefed up old gen stuff and we're starting to see the first trickles of next gen ideas and actual improvement to gameplay coming through. I mean, that said, I've played a ton of games and it probably comes to no surprise that the indie games have been my favorite once again. So the first one I'd like to say is Binding of Isaac Repentance. It's the final installment, uh, and they've said this before, but this is the actual, actual final installment of Binding of Isaac, which goes nicely with their 10 year anniversary. Repentance is an add-on pack, which is probably as big as the original Isaac. It has hundreds of new uh, power-ups and trinkets and items, increasing the types of synergies as well as the addition of whole new levels, doubling of the amount of characters you can be, and just general quality of life improvements. So it took me about 20 to 30 hours of gameplay just to get to the new content because it's sort of stuck behind lots of challenges, but when I finally got there I was very impressed. I mean this game seven years on the PlayStation and I'm still finding new things and unlocking new things every time I play it. It's fantastic in that regard. Uh, the other game which I've found particularly noteworthy this year has been Disco Elysium. You play a washed up drunken detective who looks a little bit like Tosh from The Bill and you wrestle your psyche as you try and solve the murder in a fictional French town. Disco Elysium looks good, but it's the narrative and voice acting where this game really shines. There are many other games into consideration for my list, such as Hades, The Survivalist, and Returnal, as well as a bunch of new next-gen improved versions of old games, but at the end of the day, it's been Repentance and Disco Elysium that has really impressed me. So my games that made 2021 less shitty are as follows. They are Hades, which I played on the PS4. Um, I absolutely loved it. I loved everything from the mythology side, the story, the gameplay, all the gameplay loops making sense as far as the story is concerned, the stories being almost never ending. Um, it's distracted the shit out of me all year. I've enjoyed it. It's tough as nails. But I've had a lot of fun playing through it and finally completing it uh, and beating everyone I even beat Charon uh, which not a lot of people can say they've done so yep I have explored it all and would highly recommend it um, second game hmm let me think uh, I was going to say Hunt Showdown but Carlos has already covered that so I'm going to say Tales of Iron uh, a game about little rats swarding around with their swords great combat great soundtrack wonderful animation uh, just thoroughly enjoyed every second of, of playing the game quite frankly uh, and a third one I, I suppose I'm going to have to go for Sea of Thieves yes uh, obviously not on the PlayStation or anything like that I've been playing it on the PC and through Game Pass Ultimate on my mobile telephonical device I absolutely love being a pirate Nyar, it's bloody satisfying so it is Jim Lad um, it's just one of the most relaxing games I've ever played. At the same time, it's hectic, it's a pain in the ass. some things are epic, but sailing around with your mates is always going to be good fun. Taking on other pirates and stuff like that. I've waited long enough to play it, I finally gave it a go this year, and it's easily one of my favourite games that have ever existed. So, uh, if you like your pirating, I highly recommend setting sail into the seas of thieves. And there we have it, the games that made 2021 less shitty for everybody. Um, I hope you can get something out of this video. From everyone here at The Essential Gamer, we thank you very much for joining us throughout the year of 2021. We hope we've entertained you to some end and hope that you'll join us again next year when we look to take production levels up slightly, as you can see. Um, not now. I mean, it looks shit now. But... The channel will be having 
a, a makeover of sorts, a, a New Year's resolution to join the gym. Um, we're going to put it through its paces. We hope you'll join us for that. Until then, we have been The Essential Gamer. This has been 2021. You have been absolutely fucking fantastic. And we'll see you next time.